It's often really easy to feel as though taking time for yourself and nurturing your feminine is a non-productive thing to do. It feels like you're wasting time or you're going to be behind, but truly stepping into your feminine power is a way that you're going to be able to accomplish all the goals that you want to achieve and maintain balance in your life. This is something that I personally struggled with for a very long time, balancing both of my desire and need to flow and follow my intuition, as well as be incredibly Product. But since this has been my focus for the past couple of years, it's something that has truly transformed my life. And so I want to give you practical steps so that you can do this for yourself as well. If this is your first time seeing my face, my name is Keisha. And on this page, I post wellness, holistic skin, and lifestyle related videos. If that is something that you're interested in, then make sure you are subscribed. And without further ado, let's get started. <music> is feminine energy. Feminine energy is the energy of stillness. It's the energy of receiving, of intuition, reflection, and relaxation. When you think of the feminine, you want to remember that there is a time for everything. So just like the seasons come and go, there's a time to be outside and be active. There's a time to plan. There's a time to relax and there's a time to get work done. And it's in that stillness and in that reflection that we find creativity. Now the masculine energy is the energy that focuses on structure, on action, on logic, on control. Cultivating feminine energy doesn't mean that you're abandoning the masculine altogether. It's about creating balance with both of these energies for your overall well-being. Part 2. Releasing Masculine Overload so here are a few signs that you may be stuck in your masculine energy. If you are feeling overworked, if you're feeling an inability to relax, you're in a constant state of production or productivity, and you lack emotional connection. If this is what you're feeling, then it's important to address the unhealthy habits that are draining your feminine energy. The first thing that comes to mind is over scheduling. If you're overpacking your day with way too many things to get done on your to-do list, you're likely not end up being able to finish everything on your list. Subconsciously, you're already aware that there's way too many things and you're going to start feeling overwhelmed because you know you can't finish all these things. But because it's like a looming cloud over your head, it's going to cause you more stress and anxiety. And that is what we are trying to stay away from. It's important to remember that there is a time for everything so it may be just planning out your days a little bit better the second unhealthy habit would be multitasking when i was still working at my nine to five job one of the most important characteristics in my field was being able to multitask and i cannot tell you the amount of time i spent just stuck with headaches and you know just feeling depleted and drained and like my head was splitting in so many different directions and unable to actually focus on the tasks that mattered. The worst part about it was that this unhealthy habit didn't just stay at work, it seeped into every single facet of my life. And so it was super important to create these separations, which I'll talk about a little bit later. The third unhealthy habit is neglecting self-care. Oftentimes when we have a lot to do on our to-do list, pouring into ourselves and taking care of ourselves become the last thing on our mind. And if we squeeze it in for five minutes at the end of the day, then like at least we did it versus it actually being a priority in our lives. The last unhealthy habit is repressing our emotions by denying what we're feeling, by not creating space for us to feel what we are feeling and process those emotions. We are operating from a place of, you know, emotional bankruptcy, which really creates a void for addictive behaviors and and habits to form. The other thing I will mention as well in this category is stopping the need to have control over every single aspect of not just your life but everything around you. It's important to recognize the things that are within your control and also the things that are outside of your control. You really don't want to waste your time focusing on trying to change the things that are outside of your control because if you can't manipulate them, if you can't change them anyways, 
what are you actually doing? It's a much better use of your time to focus on the things that you can control and understand that there will be a certain level of flow and flux and you're gonna have to be flexible and adaptable. Remember that it's good to make your plans and make your goals and your dream boards and all those things like that, but leave room for unforeseen circumstances. Now that we have addressed the unhealthy habits and we've identified them, here are some practical steps to building healthy habits to replace those unhealthy ones. The first one is to schedule downtime. You want to block out time in your day that you can truly focus and be present on rest and creativity. Focusing on allowing your body to heal itself. We do this primarily when we sleep. It's a time when all of the things that we do to be active are laid to rest and the body and the natural processes can take over and complete their necessary cycles that they don't get to do throughout the day and when we treat our body the same way by giving ourselves time to fully rest be present when you rest without anxiety or anything like that it can truly help you replenish your emotional physical mental battery and when you do block out specific times in your day to do this it prevents you from feeling guilty for not being productive because you know that you've already planned out time for you to be creative and focus on rest and so that kind of also leads you into creating time to focus on your hobbies like i said the things that make you feel joy if you're really into music and you used to play an instrument back in the day carve out some time in your day when you can pick up that instrument and just play ideally about one hour of free time for yourself and when i say free time i don't mean watching tv and i don't mean scrolling on tiktok i mean doing something that helps you stretch your creative muscles the second would be setting boundaries for yourself when you're living in your wounded feminine it can be very hard to assert your needs, your boundaries, and to say no when you cannot take on other work or other responsibilities. Be comfortable with saying no and making other people a little bit inconvenienced for you, the sake of your own health. And the third one is single tasking. So I touched on this before, but essentially just being present with every task that you're doing. One thing that I really love to do to combat multitasking is to time block my entire day. So I have sacred times for my morning routine that are undisturbed. For the majority of the day, my my phone is on do not disturb. I find that notifications are so distracting for me. As someone who's neurodivergent, at times I can be incredibly hyper fixated and hyper focused. But if anything that really triggers my dopamine response comes up to me, I will very easily get distracted. It's very hard for me to maintain that willpower. So I completely block out that stimulus in the first place. I don't even encounter a situation where I would be tempted to be distracted. I leave about one to two hours in the day when my phone is not on do not disturb just in case you know people are trying to get in touch with me for emails for social media and phone calls but this will really cut down on that multitasking and once again make sure that you're not feeling overwhelmed or burdened or or ashamed really of not being productive which is something that i really went through for a very long time <laughs> how to cultivate feminine energy the first thing I would recommend is implementing healing practices that really work for you. If you're trying to cultivate the feminine, it's important to nurture and heal the feminine. So the first thing that I recommend doing is meditation and visualization. I talk about this all of the time, but it is the number one thing that has truly made the biggest difference in my life. If you're trying to work through a problem or trying to choose between a few different options of the direction to go, it can be incredibly helpful to walk away from that situation so you can gain inspiration. When you walk away from the situation, it allows you to encounter different stimulus that will give you a different perspective on a situation. And oftentimes I find that situations or knowledge that seemingly have absolutely nothing to do with the problem I'm currently dealing with gives me the answer to my problem just because it gives me a different way of thinking of it. Another thing that I talk about all the time is journaling. Sometimes it really helps to get all your thoughts out of your head and actually onto paper. Just by hearing yourself write it out, hearing yourself talk 
talk it through, it's truly helpful for digesting those problems and dealing with them. And of course, doing this without any judgment. Don't judge the thoughts that are coming out of your mind. Rather, be curious about the thoughts and the questions that are coming out of your mind. Ask yourself where they came from, if they're helping you in this situation, or if they're pulling you back. And if they are, what can you do differently instead? And the third key and the third healing practice involves healing your body from the inside out. I'm a huge tea lover. I'm someone who really loves herbs. I'm currently learning about botany and herbalism. I love using natural herbal remedies to help me throughout the day, whether it's I need to feel more energized, whether it's I need to regulate my cortisol, detox my body, or calm myself down. There is a herb for everything. So I'd recommend researching a few different teas that you love using. A really simple and accessible one is chamomile that really helps to calm you down. And if you need something that will give you more energy, peppermint is a good option there too. The next thing I'd recommend doing is finding different ways to connect with your body. The feminine is all about feeling. It's about pleasure. It's about sensation. And so finding different ways to connect with your physical body, especially in movement, can be very, very helpful overall. Gentle movement like yoga has been really beneficial for me. Dancing as well helps you connect to the rhythm to beat and it really gets you out of your head and into your body to feel the actual rhythm of the music you're listening to and then of course nature walks simply just being in nature being around trees being outside in the natural world is enough to boost your energy regulate your nervous system it really truly improves your life so find a way to be outside even if you're not doing anything extremely extraneous just a walk is all that you need um the next thing would be cultivating emotional well-being so embracing allowing yourself to be vulnerable to allow you to feel your emotions rather than avoiding them or running away from them. It's important to create safe spaces where you can truly release your emotions, release all of the stress, the worries, and everything that you've been holding up and bottling in. For a very long time, I was holding in a lot of those emotions and being, once again, ashamed and embarrassed of not having the tools that I needed to understand them or not even having the time itself to understand them. It was until I saw these physical ailments start to appear in my body that I actually did something about it. For me, this manifested as various cysts throughout my body and it can manifest for different people in different ways as well. So something to take note of, if you are feeling dis-ease in your body, it is likely because of an emotional trauma, an emotional connection, something that you're not feeling, you're not processing or releasing. I wanna say at least three or four years ago, every single day while driving home from work, I had a cold crying session in my car. I cried my little eyes out and just really let it out without judging myself, without feeling guilty of it. And honestly, sometimes all you need is a really good cry. After you've cried it out, you can calm yourself and be still and then think about, well, there's nothing I can do about the situation. And so I rather focus on what I can do, but allowing yourself that time to be vulnerable and let it out can be incredibly beneficial. Once it's out, it's in front of you and you can actually do something about it. But if you don't acknowledge it, you bottle it up, you hold it in, you really cannot fix something that you're not confronting. The next thing would be focusing on self-love and self-acceptance. This can look like affirmations by continuously telling yourself, especially in the mirror, I am enough, I trust my body, I know I'm exactly where I need to be, things like that, those powerful I statements are very, very helpful for resetting your subconscious mind. One of the reasons why we have a lot of self-doubt and a lack of self-confidence and self-worth is because of all of the tiny little thought processes that have been programmed into our minds from the time that we were just children. And so by hearing these things repetitively time and time again, they have solidified and become a part of your identity identity. So you have to participate in actively reprogramming and changing those prior programmings and now reset them in a way that is productive for you. And that's what affirmation work does for you. 
So the next thing has to do with your relationships and your feminine energy. You know, when you are such a good person, when you are such a nice person, it is very easy for you to be taken advantage of simply because you don't want to step on other people's feelings. You care about people so much that oftentimes we leave ourselves for last and we let ourselves fall by the wayside. We really do not want to be doing that. The feminine, while she is a receiving energy, she is also not afraid to assert what she needs and assert the boundaries that she needs in her relationship and this is true for every single type of relationship in your life whether that be your family your friends your romantic relationships your uh, professional relationships asserting the boundaries for yourself is like probably one of the best things that you can do for yourself and your emotional well-being and when you do assert your boundaries be prepared because a lot of the people around you may not like that the people who've benefited from you not being in your power, not asserting yourself, not protecting your own energy are not going to like when you suddenly start doing that because now it no longer benefits them and it creates inconveniences for them. I think that this is a really important phase in that self-growth process because it identifies the people around you that are actually for you and helping you versus the people that you may need to be distancing yourself from if they cannot respect those boundaries. And of course, the last thing is building a spiritual connection. I grew up in a very religious family and for a very long time, I felt like I was just going through the motions of being religious without actually having a spiritual connection. Coming to this realization in my early 20s, it gave me the true freedom to explore my own spirituality and explore my connection to um, a higher power. Now, it doesn't have to be religious in nature. I am still not religious at all, but it's really about connecting to your higher power, connecting to that purpose, that drive, to that inner guidance that will help you in every facet of your life, and especially with your feminine energy, since the feminine is the protector of the spiritual realm. As we bring life into this world, we are the portal between this world and the next. And so it's very important important for us to connect to that inner spiritual realm. Part 4. Addressing Common Fears and Deterrence while you are on this journey of self-discovery and cultivating your feminine energy, there's a lot of doubts that you will start to see surface if they haven't already. And this is of course because of the programming that you have received in the earlier stages of life. So we'll talk about a few of them here. The first most common one is a fear of vulnerability. When you have grown up with a wounded feminine, it is very common to overcompensate by asserting your nonchalantness, by asserting that nothing hurts you, by ignoring or denying anything that makes you feel small or weak or vulnerable, essentially. But a healthy feminine energy understands that vulnerability is power vulnerability is strength because it is, it is in that vulnerability that we develop our core values and our character sitting in that vulnerability can be incredibly transformative not only for ourselves but for the people around us because through vulnerability we find compassion for ourselves and for others we find love and so we speak love whenever we talk to people around us and of course when we talk to ourselves so if you're trying to let go of the fear of vulnerability you'll want to start small share your feelings with someone you trust this could be a best friend a partner family member or also you can journal your feelings the more that you engage in mindful vulnerability practice is the more that you will be comfortable with your vulnerabilities number two is the shame around femininity i think back to all of the movies that we used to watch as a child through disney or otherwise they were just reinforcing Saying the fact that femininity is lesser than, the femininity is weak, or it is not as good as, insert masculinity, right? These messagings of not being enough can be very damaging to your psyche for both boys and girls. And of course, it doesn't just disappear when we become adults. So it's really important to reframe how you view femininity. Understanding that being soft and being vulnerable is power, that is a strength. And also changing your relationship with stillness and rest, understanding that there is power in rest. The next thing would be lack of time. We acknowledge 
the fact that these are all great things that we need to do we want to do them but because we have so many different priorities it falls to the bottom of the list so what i would recommend doing is incorporate small moments in your day for your feminine energy you know we're building healthy habits we're building a new lifestyle and if new year's resolutions are any indicator it does not happen overnight and usually after about three weeks we no longer continue because it's too big of an overarching goal. So by implementing tiny, small changes every single day, eventually they will build up to you becoming a completely different person. And that is the best way to make the greatest change. Although it may not seem like such a big deal at the time, you're creating healthy habits that you naturally fall into. A really great way to do this is be mindful with the daily things that you do. Like when you're taking a shower, washing your hair, doing your skin, care you're not just checking something off your list you are taking the time to make it a pleasurable experience by lighting a candle by putting on some incense by spritzing yourself or putting oils on yourself fragrant oils or putting eucalyptus in the shower making it a ritualistic experience versus just something you're tackling on your to-do list the next thing would be the skepticism about the effectiveness of these mindful practices. I know that when I first started getting into mindful practices, I didn't really think that it would work. I mean, how much could saying an affirmation to yourself in the mirror really change your life, right? That's kind of that inner critic, that skepticism that is coming out. Nothing that I am telling you will work unless you believe it will work. Your mind is so powerful. There is a saying that the man who says he can do something and the man who says he cannot do something are both right. Literally because you are telling yourself it is so, it becomes so. So embrace the experimentation process. Process. Rather than shutting an idea down before you've even opened the book, practice being curious about these new systems, why they were developed, how, what is the science behind why it changes. The more that you become inquisitive and enjoy the process of experimentation is the more that it will become real to you. Understanding that healing isn't an instant result situation. It's about feeling just a little bit more connected day to day. And the last one is the fear of this identity shift. So oftentimes we hold on so fervently to this idea or persona or lifestyle that we've created for ourselves simply because it's all that we know. And when you are changing yourself into a different person, you'll find that there's a lot of things that you need to let go of. Although you know that it's good for you to let go of, it's the only thing you know and you find comfort in that. Let's say that you're an introvert and you know that your friends are toxic and they're not helping you move forward, but they're the only people that you know. And the very idea of meeting someone new and putting yourself out there is absolutely frightening to you, terrifying to you. Of course, you're going to stay with your friends with who you feel comfortable with. A part of it is embracing the unknown. And the unknown is a huge part of femininity. Femininity is that void. It's that abyss. Something that you can't quite put into words. You can't quite study it. You can't quite observe it. You can't plan for it. You can't prepare for it. It just is. And so a huge part of this healing process is being okay with not having all of the answers. That is the masculine energy who wants to control, who wants to know everything. The feminine is very okay with not having all the answers, knowing that when you know yourself self nothing else around you really matters because you trust that you will always be able to adapt just remember that healing your feminine energy doesn't erase who you are it doesn't mean rejecting everything that you've done your entire life it means that you're embracing that part of you it is a huge component of who you are right now you know we're not trying to create new moments of shame and be ashamed of who you were, it doesn't erase who you are. It actually enhances it. It gives it more depth. This is one of the reasons why we love main characters and stories and why we root for them because we see their triumphs and their pitfalls and it gives us a connection to that person. Be the main character in your own story and build that connection with yourself. I really hope that I was able to give you some ways that you can cultivate your feminine energy. I would love to hear down in the comments below. How has that process, that journey been going for you? If you have any tips for anyone just starting out their journey, please leave it down below. It definitely helps all of us become better, more well-rounded human beings. Click over here to see some of my previous videos. And as always, stay gorgeous, stay fabulous, and I'll see you lovely ladies and gents in my next video. Bye!